Hi, my name is Harmony Dust Grillo, and I used to be a stripper. So I was raised in a very violent neighborhood in a chaotic home. Just as an example, Domino's Pizza would not deliver to us after dark, and even the police wouldn't come to our neighborhood after dark. I remember being eight years old and someone coming into our home and beating my mother nearly to death with brass knuckles, and it wasn't until three days later that the police finally came. She called them, but they didn't show up. And she actually, before she lost consciousness, called a friend who ended up taking her to the hospital and saving her life. And I can still remember sitting in the living room when the police finally showed up and knocked on the door and said that they got a call, that there was a disturbance. So that's kind of the context that I grew up in. My household was really chaotic because my mother struggled with uh, drug addiction. And that meant that I was exposed to a lot, including sexual abuse from a very early age, starting at the age of five, and then I was raped as a teen. One of my abusers was my mother's boyfriend. At that point I was 13 and I finally started standing up for myself. And I ran away from home and my mom realized that I was serious and that I wasn't coming back until he was gone, so she finally kicked him out. I came home, only she left with him. She ended up leaving with him and so she left me at 13 with my eight-year-old brother for three months with $20 and a book of food stamps. And obviously $20 didn't last very long, the food stamps didn't last very long, so I started stealing from the liquor store to feed my brother and I. And it was that summer that I became involved with an older boy in my neighborhood. Because of the situation I was in, I just saw a knight in shining armor. You know, when he was around, I didn't have to steal because he would buy my brother and I food. And when he was around, I felt protected in that neighborhood that I lived in because he would always tell me, I got your back, I'll take care of you. And so I became really, really attached to him. I ended up in a seven year long relationship with him that ultimately became physically and emotionally abusive and led me to working in the sex industry as a stripper. And my boyfriend became my pimp. So every night I came home and gave him all of my money and he completely controlled my entire life and I was so broken um, just from years of abuse and low self-esteem that I let him control my life. Afraid to leave him, didn't see a way out, felt completely trapped in that situation. The thing about the sex industry is that those of us that are in it, most of us, we end up using a stage name and with that also creating an entire alter identity that we hide behind. And so I remember the first night I showed up for my very first shift and the DJ said, you know, what do you want to go by? What's your name? And I hadn't really thought of it. So I said, Harmony, you know, that's my name. And I remember watching him write Harmony in black um, dry erase on the whiteboard. And it was just, it was too much. And so I said, no, 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 take, take it down. I, I'll be Monique. And really from that night forward, for the next few years, I became Monique. And Monique was a compilation of other people's fantasies. Monique wasn't a real person. She was someone that I could hide behind while I was working in the sex industry. And not only was my name fake, but everything I told the customers was fake. Everything about um, the life that I created from Monique was a complete lie. It, it made me feel safe and it was the only way for me that I could work as a stripper, but at the same time, um, eventually I began to lose sight of who Harmony was. And you know, the only people I had contact with were my abusive exploiter and women, other women in the club and the customers. And no one really knew who I really was. And honestly, I didn't know who I really was. You know, a lot of people think, you know, the sex industry is so glamorous and, and so empowering, but it's, it's hard, and I, I don't think a lot of people see the reality of what women working in the sex industry have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. There's a lot of talk nowadays about sex trafficking, and you know we're hearing you know, all these stories about sex trafficking and that it's happening here in the United States, but what I don't think everyone realizes is that 70% of female trafficking victims are trafficked into the commercial sex industry. That means they're working in strip clubs, they're working on porn sets, they're working for escort agencies, they're working in every single area of the commercial sex industry, that's where they're working. We can't turn a blind eye to that. And I think that's super important for people to know. You know, we get called names and 
um, touched when we don't want to be touched. And, you know, I remember there were several occasions where, you know, a customer would violate me and assault me, sexually assault me. And, you know, I would actually, I was so angry. I would just take off my stiletto and I would literally beat them in the head with it. And I felt so powerless. From my perspective, it was self-defense, but they would look at me and see a woman working in a strip club that's half naked and think basically that I was asking for it. And so working there was really hard. Ultimately, what got me out of that, it began with a friendship and just a person who loved me unconditionally and didn't judge me for the crazy life that I was living, just loved me. and. It was through that friendship that I saw an example of a woman who had boundaries. She really inspired me. So eventually I started going to church and I started just pursuing a relationship with God and my heart started changing, my mind started changing, and I started to believe that, you know, that I'm lovable and that I have value and that maybe I was even put on this earth for a purpose that was beyond working in the sex industry as a stripper and being stuck in an abusive relationship. I finally got the courage to leave the ex-boyfriend slash pimp and leave the sex industry and start on this recovery journey, this healing journey that completely changed my life. I remember a few years after that, I found myself sitting across the street from the strip club where I used to work and I felt like you know, I felt like I was sitting outside of a prison that had once held me captive. And I knew that there were other women who worked there who maybe still felt as trapped as I once did. And I wanted to do something to, um, to support them. And so I didn't know what to do. And I just started writing handwritten notes on postcards and put them on their cars and just let them know like, hey, I've been through maybe something similar to what you've been through and I'm here for you. And it was from that moment that the vision of Treasures was birthed. And I ended up starting a nonprofit organization called Treasures. And we are an outreach and support group for women in the commercial sex industry and victims of sexual exploitation and trafficking. We reach women with the simple message that changed my life. And that message is that they are loved and valued and purposed and that support is available for them if and when they want it, if and when they're ready. And that we're willing to just show up and love them unconditionally and walk with them through their process and their journey. Stripping changed my life. I was already a super broken girl going into it and whatever sense of identity that I had left, I felt like stripping stripped away from me. I didn't think I would live to see 21. I thought if someone else didn't take me out, I was going to take my own life because I was that hopeless. And at the same time, you know, now I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if it weren't for stripping and if it weren't for everything that I went through. What I really hope in sharing my story and sharing everything that I've shared today is that people will see the humanity in the woman on the other end of the dollar and that you know behind every image that you see of a woman in a strip club in porn is a real person with a real story